Hi guys, I'm Maylin Dovan, certified athletic therapist and founder of Rehab You Movement and Performance Therapy. And I'm with my good friend Alexi again for part two uh, of the capsule on lateral hip pain. So in part one of this capsule, we explained that lateral hip pain that used to be diagnosed as trochanteric bursitis, uh, research is now showing that the main um, cause for lateral hip pain is typically gluteal tendinopathy and we discussed the classic stretches that are being prescribed and how those put compressive load on the tendon. If you haven't watched part one of this capsule, go back and watch it and you can also watch the capsule on stop stretching for tendinopathy where I explain compressive load and, and its effect on uh, tendinopathy. So in this capsule we're going to talk about um, reactivating the glute med because the pathomechanics that lead to glute med tendinopathy are that excessive adduction under load. So that's a question of frontal plane stability. And if we talk about frontal plane stability, of course, we have to talk about the glute med. Um, we should also talk about the foot. And again, I have plenty of other capsules on foot stability because of course, excessive adduction at the hip can come from bad stability at the foot. So that's something that we would of course also address. So again, the um, reactivation exercises that we will use for the glute med, these exercises are important because if there's a pathology in the tendon, the glute, the glute med will be inhibited and we wanna reactivate that muscle. But again, we have to avoid that adducted position. So typical exercises that we do like clamshells um, or doing elastic banded hip, uh, hip hip band shuffles uh, may not be the best if we allow the hip to go into an adducted position. So here are a couple of examples of exercises for the glute med that avoid that adducted position um, and also help really, really isolate the glute med and not let the IT band come in to play. Because if we take, for example, band shuffles, um, a lot of the time the IT band will take over for abduction in the in the in the band shuffle exercises okay and there's also an article about that on the blog hey guys thanks for watching our videos and don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel as so we're gonna get alexi uh, lying supine and i'm gonna pretend i'm a wall okay but he would essentially use a cushion that he would jet up against the wall this knee bent okay and then he would push into abduction isometric abduction with that knee. So with this supine lying position, knee flexed, not crossing the midline, so no compressive load on the tendon and the position doesn't allow for the IT band or, or the TFL to overtake the movement. So he's really isolating that glute med, okay? So there's one exercise that we would use. Now I mentioned clamshells before, so the typical clamshells, let's show them what that might look like, which people usually do with a band around the knee. They're going to have a band around the knee and they're gonna open up the knees. So every time he comes over here, notice how he has now crossed the midline. So he's now in adduction and he's gonna get that compressive load on the tendon. So instead we're gonna do an abducted clamshell. So he's gonna do the same thing, but he's gonna maintain his hip into abduction and then he's opening the knees apart the same way he would a regular clamshell. But instead of having his feet together, he's up in abduction and therefore he's never crossing that midline. Okay, so not getting that compressive load on the tendon. All right, so there's a couple of ideas for glute med exercises that would avoid having that compressive load um, and also avoid having the TFL uh, come into play. Now, as far as integration, we're always trying to load that. And obviously it's about mechanics. It's about foot stability. Um, you know, I don't have to tell you that doing a forward lunge will be more difficult to control adduction than doing, for example, a back lunge where my, my support foot doesn't have to move or decelerate. So those are kind of things to start thinking about. One thing that's, not, that's usually interesting is step ups because step ups give you that um, stability component. Uh, lateral step ups work well because I know that because of the position, it's the best way to avoid going into adduction. So he's gonna step kind of diagonal and lateral onto the box. And as he comes up, he's never gonna be more than just neutral. He's not gonna cross the midline, 
right? And it's gonna be easier for him because he's focusing on coming across. So I usually find that to be a good exercise to start. Um, forward step ups could work as well. So progressing to from stepping up and then to deceleration. So it's a bit contrary to what we usually do. You know, we usually start with eccentrics and of course we want him to do a slow and controlled eccentrics, but stepping up is usually easier than the deceleration mechanics of moving forward, such as in a forward lunge or a walking lunge. Um, it's, it'll be easier to control the adduction with an exercise like the step up. Okay, so lateral hip pain, glute med tendinopathy, pathomechanics are excessive adduction in a, in a loaded position. So we need to remove stretches that increase compression load, modify our glute med exercise so we don't go into adduction and have that compression load, and then select our exercises to be able to control that excessive adduction. So the best exercises that allow the person to really be able to control that and then progress our way back to making, progress our way to making that harder and harder. So deceleration, forward stepping, forward lunging, that kind of stuff. Okay, so that sums up a bit of a strategy to deal with lateral hip pain and the kind of things to avoid, the cl classic things that we see done that we should actually be avoiding.